What's happening guys, Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today we're going to be learning all about the high performance package in the 2020 Mustang EcoBoost. Now before we get started, make sure that you like the video and subscribe down below if you do enjoy the content that we're talking about. Turn on those bell notifications, and the reason why is because I like to hide Amazon gift card codes somewhere in my video. Be first one to find it, and it's all yours. So let's have a little bit of fun and learn all about that high performance package in the Mustang. All right, guys, now this video is going to be a little bit more technical in nature. So if you have any questions, you want to add some conversation, be sure to add it down below in that comment section. We're going to start off by looking at the Ford website just so we can see how this package is broken down. Now, one thing to note is that it is available whether you're looking at the regular fastback edition of the vehicle or in the premium version. So whether you go for the premium or the regular version, it really depends on a your budget and whether you want those cloth seats versus leather seats. So you're going to get a leather seat that's heated and cooled in the premium, but you don't get that inside of the base Mustang. But again, it's really a matter of budget and preference. So let's look and take a look at what's actually included in this thing. So there are a ton of different things the high performance package adds on. On top of the engine, which is gonna go from that 310 horsepower to 332, there are a lot of other things that are included there. So let's click and see what it does from an aesthetics perspective. Unfortunately, as you saw there, we do lose the over the hood stripe, but that is something that you can do aftermarket. There are a lot of decal shops that can do that for you. But look at the aesthetic changes of, the, uh, changes of this thing. So let's turn it off and then go back on again. So, so you can see here, we change the wheels around. That pony badge moves from the center off to the driver's side. We've got some hood stripes here as well. Let's do a little bit of a rotate so we can see side views. Again, same thing, we've got a couple different decals that are there, deck lid spoiler in the back there as well, which is kind of nice. Now, looking at the premium version of the vehicle, we're gonna add that package in as well. Same thing, we lose that over the top stripe, whether it's the premium or the regular version. Okay, but as you can see, aesthetically, it does the exact same thing, whether you're looking at the base Mustang or at the premium version of the vehicle. So again, it really is a matter of what's your budget and what's your personal preference there but it does, it looks pretty sharp. Really, really sharp actually, which is kind of cool. All right, and from here, let's click on this button again. And as we can see, so tons of different things. Let's break down each feature individually and we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Starting off with, first and foremost, is going to be that 3.55 limited slip axle ratio. So. What exactly is it? So the axle ratio is also known in this case as the final drive ratio. If we take a look at how it actually works, it's an interesting thing. So power starts off from the engine, moves to the transmission, down the crankshaft into the rear differential. From there, it gets split into the axle cranks and then it rotates the tires. So when we look at axle ratios, the base in the Mustang is going to be a 3.15 or a 3.31. With the high performance package, that bumps it up to a 3.55 axle ratio. So what does that mean? That means that the higher your axle ratio is, that means that the, it's, well, the number of times that the drivetrain has to rotate in order for the wheels to spin once. So with the 3.55 ratio, that drivetrain has to spin 3.55 times in order for the wheels to turn once. So there are a couple things that you wanna look at when you're looking at upgrading that axle ratio. And the thing you wanna ask yourself is, why do you wanna change your axle ratio? That's a fantastic question. So replacing the ratio, if you go higher, is going to give you quicker acceleration. So in the high performance package, you will notice a bit of a difference. It's going to give you that feeling of, you know, flipping back in your chair a little bit more. So it's going to give you better acceleration with a higher ratio, but there's a caveat. You lose a little bit of top end speed there. And then on the opposite side of it, if you go with a lower ratio, you get a higher speed, but the acceleration's affected. So what is the best ratio? That really depends on you. And the reason why I say that is, what are you going to do with the vehicle? Are you using it as a street vehicle, track vehicle, or somewhere kind of in between? So let's break it down so you can see which ratio you wanna go with for different scenarios. If the Mustang's gonna be your daily driver, the 3.13 or the 3.31 are going to be okay. That's going to be standard that's coming, gonna come in the automatic versus the manual version of the vehicle. Now obviously with the 3.55 in the high performance package, it's going to give you a good balance of fuel economy and increased power. If you're using it as a street car with some track use, 3.55 is an absolute minimum is what you should look at. You could look at a 3.73 aftermarket as well. Uh, that is going to set you back a couple bucks. And that's going to be the case across the board if you're gonna to wanna to jump into that higher axle ratio doing something aftermarket. 
Now, last one is going to be, if you're going to be using it strictly as a track vehicle, so strictly for track use, do you want to look at the EcoBoost Mustang at that point? Yeah, probably not, but as a minimum, you want to go for a 3.73 axle ratio at a minimum, a 4.10 aftermarket as well as an option. Now there is a downside to that. In a forced induction vehicle, you don't want to go too high in the axle ratio. It just it doesn't make sense. But where that 4.10 is going to come into play is if you're looking at the GT. But if you're using your EcoBoost as a track car, look at a 3.73 aftermarket ratio. Next one is going to be some upgraded wheels. So let's do a little bit of a zoom in here. There we go. So a side-by-side -side comparison, looking at the 18 inch all season tires, which are going to be in the standard package versus a 19 inch summer performance tire in the high performance package. So a little bit of a difference there. Next up is going to be the active valve exhaust, which I absolutely love that Ford has introduced this in the vehicle. So the active valve exhaust is going to give you the ability to control the sound and the loudness of the exhaust in your vehicle. There are four different modes, quiet, normal, sport, and track. In order for you to get a listen, let's jump into a vehicle so you can take a look. So as you heard there, there is quite a little bit of a difference there. You will notice a bigger difference in the GT, but you still can hear it here. Next up is going to be a painted strut brace. So the strut brace, also known as a strut bar or shock brace, connects the strut towers under your hood. The benefit of strut bars in any vehicle is that it's going to give you better handling. So when we take those sharper corners, it will allow you to handle slightly better. Aluminum instrument panel, this is something that's an aesthetic upgrade on the inside of the vehicle. Let's look on the left hand side is going to be our standard vehicle versus on the right, which is going to be our high performance package. Uh, it, it, there, is, there is a noticeable difference. You can't really tell on the screen here, but I'm going to increase the size of it in just a second. But one thing to note is that you also do get gauge packs, which is going to show the oil pressure as well as the boost gauge just above that center console screen. So zooming in here, as you can see, there is a difference in the aesthetic there. And it does look really, really sharp, especially when you see it in person. Next up is going to be the GT Performance Pack Front Splitter. Now this is something that was built in from the, or taken I should say, from the GT version of the vehicle. But if we look at that lip underneath of the bottom of the bumper there, you can see that is going to be unique, borrowed from the GT into the EcoBoost. Hood accent stripe, I have outlined it here, so it is easier to see on brighter color vehicles, but it's going to be a magnetic strip just down that center of that hood there, which or off to the side I should say of the hood. So it does look really, really sharp. Heavy duty front springs. Now, one of the benefits of having those heavy duty springs is that it will bring overall better handling to the Mustang. Larger brake rotors and four piston calipers. So one of the benefits there. So even though the Mustang is rear wheel drive, when you brake the power, the weight of the vehicle goes from the back to the front of the vehicle. So having those larger front end calipers uh, the larger brake rotors, I should say, and the four piston calipers is that it's going to improve your braking performance in the vehicle. Larger radiator, so cooling is important in any vehicle, but with a turbocharged engine, like what you would find in the Mustang EcoBoost, is that it's even more important as the temperature in the engine will normally run hotter than usual. So a larger radiator is going to keep the engine a little bit cooler, which is going to increase the performance in the vehicle. That's why your car may seem like it runs a little bit better in colder temperatures. Raised deck lid spoiler, it is a kind of a little bit of a unique thing, so it brings a little bit more downforce to the vehicle, which is going to slightly increase the grip on the road. Now, one thing to note is that the spoiler isn't too big, which is good because there isn't a lot of drag in the vehicle, because the extra downforce from a larger spoiler is needed if you're racing, but not for a daily driver. Unique chassis tuning is going to be important because the Mustang comes with a larger axle ratio and a number of other performance upgrades. Things like the springs, sway bars, shocks, strut bar, etc. Everything is all tuned for the added performance that comes in this package. 
Now, it's going to be the same way as well for the EPAS as well as the ABS and the stability. They're all tuned to match the specs that are going to come from this upgraded package here. Last up is going to be the upsize rear sway bar. The sway bar, which is sometimes called the rear anti-sway bar, is a component of the vehicle's suspension system. It offers stiffer suspension, so the more stable your vehicle is. Uh, with the high performance package, the upsize sway bar will bring better, uh, will bring better stability, which means it will be it will give you better handling in the vehicle in comparison. So that was all about the high performance package in the Mustang EcoBoost version of the vehicle. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them down below. Any comments are absolutely appreciated. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel because it does help me grow. I hope you guys stay safe and until I see you next time, take care.